My name is Chinab. I'm an artist and illustrator. And exactly a year ago, I started making these illustrator illustrations. And I started putting it on my Instagram. And today, I will be talking about the experiences and the experiments I've been through throughout this year. So at first, when uh, the TEDx committee of Shivnadar University approached me, I was a bit confused because out of all these people in the world, why would they choose me? And then I heard this year's theme is misfits. And I thought it made sense. So when I was a little girl, we used to do these wax crayon drawings in my school. And uh, once we're done, we would take it to our teacher and tell her what we've drawn. And she would annotate them from us for us. But as a six-year-old, I found it really difficult to decide what I want to draw beforehand. So my initial instinct would be to start drawing without thinking of what I want to draw or essentially the outcome of it. So I would draw something, and then I would stare at it for a significant amount of time. And then I would just go like, that is a lizard, that is a tamarind, and the gray line in the very middle is the river beside my house. And it's gray because I have never seen a clean blue river in Pune in my entire lifetime. So what I'm doing right now is the exact same thing. I would make something, combine it with the text of my choice, and the end result will turn out to be something entirely different. And the text, uh, the image illustrates the text, and the text illustrates the image. And that's what I think is so amazing about combining text and image, that the end result is not about the text or the image. Rather, we get a collective outcome. Uh, for the text, I like to choose uh, song lyrics, sometimes poetry, and occasionally quotes. Uh, none of this stuff is written by me, but the drawing, scribbling, and painting around it, on the other hand, is done by me. I like to pick the stuff that speaks to me. A kind of a text that talks about what's going on in my head, and also about what's going on in the world around me. And I think it's really, really important, including both these perspectives in my art. Because while it is true that you can't be fully aware of the world around you until you're self-aware, you cannot be fully self-aware without knowing your surrounding. Uh, so, yeah. And as you know, politics and world events play a huge role in your daily life, whether you like it or not. The personal is the political. You might have heard that many times. And it's true, isn't it? So when you're making something inspired by your own issue, suppose you're talking about body dysmorphia, you're not just talking about the relationship with your body. You're also talking about the companies and the people that profit from you feeling insecure about the tiniest details about your body. And the social media influencers who can make you believe that you can get a body and skin like them just by using their products. So your feelings towards your body aren't just yours anymore. They're a business strategy. They're political. Painting for me is like sitting by the window. 
A window is such a simple yet such an interesting object. It allows you to be a part of the outside world while being in your own personal space. And that just fascinates me. And that's what I do. I, as an 18 year old, try to understand what is happening around me. What are the artists, musicians, authors are trying to say? I try to interpret it, pick the stuff that I resonate with, combine it, and the end result turns out to be what I want to say. Well, I have spent a significant amount of time using the local transport, uh, sitting in the window seat, looking outside the window, listening to music, which has been a major influence for my art. I had decided earlier that I will try not to give any advice, but try to use the local transport as much as you can. It makes you humble and grounded in so many ways. It's just that you get to travel with so many people from different social and economical backgrounds. And I find it really important mixing up with people who are different than you because we get so comfortable in our own little circle, our community, our friends, and just our personal anxieties. To be honest, everybody has anxiety. It is literally impossible to live in today's world without having anxiety. And it's just that because we're so hyper aware of the things happening around the world. Well, horrible things have been happening in the world since ages. But it's just now that we can pick up our phone and know the tiniest detail about an event that took place in the other side of the world. What I want to say is it is easy to get cozy in your own little world. But at a point, you have to look outside the window. You have to take a look at what is happening outside your safe and convenient environment. And as young people, we should not ignore the wars, violence against women, and the climate emergency we're facing now. Uh, last year, I was in 12th grade. It was the first time I got out of the house after the pandemic. The world wasn't the same, and neither was I. Uh, so uh, my high school was only open for two months. And to be honest, the only reason I went was to sit beside the bus window and listen to music. So one day, while making, waiting for my usual bus, I took this photograph. And then I turned it into this. Uh, yeah. Which was inspired by a paragraph I wrote right before making this. Uh, it goes something like this. This year, I only got to go to school for two months. I never liked it, to be honest. Still, I went. I like traveling by the public bus. As I sat at the window, I like people watch uh, go by. Many fancy cars pass by, as did the beggars. There were those who knew their way and those who didn't. The construction workers who belonged to the Lamani tribe walked past the streets in their beautiful, colorful clothes as people drove to work. In the meantime, the boys selling balloons wandered from place to place. The streets have a lot to offer, I think. Maybe more than school. Everybody is always going somewhere. They require us to keep moving. Oftentimes, we sugarcoat the things around us to make them look more beautiful than they actually are. But I think the streets will remain terribly, terribly real. They're dirty, they're filled with people always trying to get ahead of each other. This year, I only went to school for two months, 
what was happening around me was real i was a part of it but i was looking at it from a window like a film came to life or like a life turned into a film the morning breeze was mixed with the smell of burning plastic and i took it all in so my advice to you will be only this turn off the ac for a while and open up the windows breathe in the stinky garbage and the polluted air let let the sharp breeze of air touch your skin and let it make you shiver allow yourself to understand what it is like for the most of us and when the strong force of wind will make it difficult to see try your best to keep your eyes open look as much as you can closely and all around and then maybe one day make a painting or a sketch or write a poem and when you do remember the smell and the wind brushing against your hair the glaring sun and most importantly the people thank you very much uh i would need one more minute to finish my painting Thank you very much.